Good morning. It's so nice to see you and hear you. There was so much joyful talking going on. I love hearing that to start the day. We're going to start the service with a, with a song. If you are able, please stand and join in singing. United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here to worship with us today. If you're our guest, know you are especially welcome in this place, and there is a place here for you at St. Paul's. Um, a few announcements to make. Uh, Nancy Watson Pistol is in the lobby, and she's not dressed like that just for the fun of it. She's trying to recruit you to go to a Monarchs baseball game. So uh, if you are interested in doing that, uh, please see Nancy. She would love to. She's going to wave at the back now. Um, but but uh, she is uh, the, the, the person organizing the Monarchs game, and we would love you to be a part of it. Um, I also want to celebrate an incredible serve week. The past week, we've been serving all over the city and here at St. Paul's. Um, thank you. If you were part of leading that, if you served, um, if you give to St. Paul's, you support <laughs> serve week. And so thank you all so much. Um, another announcement that I would like to share is... Um, this coming week, we have the Great Plains Annual Conference. So that's a gather, the, the yearly gathering of Kansan and Nebraskan uh, United Methodists and um, for our, our business. And so um, we are so blessed this year. We get to celebrate Mike and Allison Marcus's ordination uh, as deacons. And so that will be on Friday. Uh, they both served here on staff. And, um, and we just celebrate the work that they do to connect the church and the world as deacons. Uh, they will be celebrated here in worship on June 8th, 18th. Yeah, June 18th, um, Pastor Jessica will be leading Deacon Day. So if you don't know what a deacon is, you're going to learn all about it. And, uh, and so you all will be able to celebrate uh, Pastors Mike and Allison uh, along with Pastor Jessica on Deacon Day. Um, another celebration for the Marcus family is uh, this, this week on Thursday, Bishop Wilson will be baptizing their daughter Eliza at the service or at, 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 at annual conference among um, United Methodists in the conference. And so that's something clergy often choose to do and to have that be in that space. And so um, you can watch the live stream if you'd like. It, it's one o'clock on Thursday. Um, but we're just so thrilled and know that there are a ton of 
St. Paul's folks who will be there because we have a ton of clergy here. Raise your hand if you're going to annual conference next week. Yeah, it's a lot. We have a lot of people. The first service also has a lot of folks. Um, we have Jesse Lip is our conference parliamentarian, and so they are next to the bishop the whole time, um, advising him and uh, helping him uh, with, with Robert's rules and things. Um, we also, uh, there was a land acknowledgement uh, that Denise Estes wrote. She's on the conference uh, Native American Ministries Committee, and so she is represented in that as well. Um, it's an incredible time to be together. I also want to name the annual conference this year is hard. It, just, it started this past week with a virtual session. 155 churches voted to um, leave our denomination, to disaffiliate, um, some to join the Global Methodist Church and some to be independent churches. But this process of disaffiliating um, happened uh, for our more conservative churches who um, don't believe that people like me should be pastors um, or churches like ours should celebrate same-sex weddings. And so um, we grieve for that. Um, it's a hard week. We come together um, having a new day in a lot of ways at annual conference, but it's also sad. It's a sad time and a hard time to um, lose colleagues, lose churches, um, and have that, that pain. And so I'd ask for your prayers for our time as we go there, um, especially for that tender place we're in of, of a new day, um, but the loss that, that happens in that as well. So that's annual conference, and then I would invite Jessica Luz to come forward. She is our chair of the transition team, um, and she can give you a little information about next Sunday, my last Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Laura said, I'm Jessica Lewis, and on behalf of the transition team, I would like to invite you all next Sunday. We're having a combined worship at 10 a.m. and then afterwards at 11, uh, weather permitting. We will be going outside and celebrating Laura's last day. We'll be bringing yard games. Please bring chairs. We will have ice cream and brownies. It should be a really good time. Um, I would also invite you this week to find a few moments and to write a card to Laura. We want you to think about some of your favorite memories, some of the things that you want to share with her as um, you reflect upon her ministry here and she goes out into the world. I know a lot of us have been reflecting on our favorite memories of Laura. Uh, I was watching 9 o'clock online and Shannon and Ben did the invitation to uh, next week's gathering to that, to that group of folks. And so Caitlin and I were talking about her favorite memories of Laura, and she'd like to share with you. Um, one of my favorite memories of Laura is probably every Sunday during COVID, and we would uh, sit around the TV and we wa would watch service uh, folding laundry. And <laughs> one Sunday, Laura said something along the lines of, of, um, like something along the lines of watching church service and folding laundry. And I start laughing because I'm sitting there listening to her and I'm just folding laundry. <laughs> so that's probably one of my favorite memories of Laura. We felt very seen that day. <laughs> Uh, so very grateful that we're not sitting around our TV uh, folding laundry and that we all can gather together. So please join us next Sunday. Please bring your cards. If you cannot come next Sunday, get your card to me, get your card to any member of the transition team, give it to a friend who will be here. There's a basket in the lobby, bring it to the office. There's any number of um, ways that you can bring those, but please um, take the time that we can honor Laura in that way. Thank you. Ten o'clock next week, one combined service. Uh, it'll be it'll be great to celebrate. As we move into worship today, um, we start a new series. Uh, these last two weeks, my last series. Uh, it's called "May It Be So," and it is my prayer for all of you. Uh, my prayer for this church. My reflections on my time here, and also, of course. Um, the good news. And so I am so, so excited 
uh, for, for that time and that reflection, but also so grateful to God for what God has done. And so we don't worship me, we worship God. So I invite you to stand as you're comfortable and join in our call to worship. the Lord. God's goodness is beyond our understanding. Yet God has revealed God's self in Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, we have come to know the absolute love of God. Lift up your hearts and praise the Lord. May God continue to bless God's people. Amen. Well, let's rejoice together again in being here in person, and let's sing Rejoice, You Pure in Heart. Invite the Mahaffey family to come forward. Y'all, so this is our sixth week in a row with either a baptism or a confirmation here at St. Paul's. We are so thrilled for baby Sloan's baptism today. What a gift. She is so excited to be here, you can tell. Um, it, is, it is so, so good. And um, so siblings in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. And all this is God's gift offered to us without price. So today, uh, Sloan's incredible parents make these promises for her, but she will be raised to be able to make those for herself um, and, and decide and choose faith for herself. We saw that a couple weeks ago with our confirmants, um, doing that, that hard work of discernment about how God is in her life. But right now, we already see the grace, Then the grace is so big. And so we are so grateful for that, and we celebrate that today of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. And then congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Sloan now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Sloan with a community of love and forgiveness 
that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. If there's any kids, do you guys want to have a front row seat? Do you want to come up here? You can come sit on the steps. It's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to. I just realized I forgot, so it's okay. <laughs> Let us pray over the water. Eternal God, your mighty acts of salvation have been made known through water. From the moving of your spirit upon the waters of creation to the deliverance of your people through the flood and through the Red Sea. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, baptized by John, and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Sloan who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness that throughout her life, dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What name is given to this child? Sloan Austin Ray. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's lay hands on her. Holy Spirit, work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. She's so cute. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You want to go back to Mama? Yeah. Oh, it is our joy to welcome our new sibling in Christ. I commend Sloan to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Friends, let us welcome Sloan Austin Ray into the life of the church. Amen. And now I'd like to invite the kids to join us for Kids Connection. We're going to meet with Miss Sherry and Miss Shannon at the back of the sanctuary, and we're going to head downstairs for our lesson. Kids through sixth grade are invited. And I'd like to invite our greeters to pass out our attendance pads. We thank you for registering your attendance with us today. It's such a joy to worship with you. And I'd like to invite all of us to sing together, Jesus Loves the Little Children, which is adapted each week with words from our welcome statement. Something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got 
got to beware Thank you, Moki. Our scripture today comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, beginning with the 21st verse. Hear these words. He sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? Those who are ashamed of me and my words Of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Indeed, truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are our rock, our strength, our redeemer. Amen. It's weird approaching all of the last things. Daily I talk to someone who will not be here next week, and they want to say goodbye. Today will be our last youth group. Over the last month, I've had many last meetings for the various committees and teams I'm on. Next week will be my last Sunday. June 14 will be my last day. With all of those lasts, I can't help but to think back to the beginning of my time at St. Paul's, to those firsts. First time in the building. My introductory was kind of a hoot. It was on a Wednesday night, and so choir was happening, and bell choir was happening, and the nursery was full, and so they were giving me a tour, and it was like trying to hide from people because they didn't want people to know yet. They literally hid me in a closet, which is a hysterical thing, right? Very funny, (laughs) very funny. Um, First time preaching. 
three services in a row on Sunday morning, back when we started up at 8.15 on Sundays. First time meeting you all. I also remember the first time I saw the St. Paul's cross. I thought, how cool is that? Kind of a disclaimer, I always feel a little bit gross about the United Methodist cross and flame. Burning crosses in history has been an act of violence and white supremacy, and I think to the folks outside the United Methodist Church, that overshadows any symbol of the spirit. But that's another day's sermon, probably. The point is, when I saw the St. Paul's cross, I thought it was wonderful. It was bright and colorful. It added stained glass to a room that is not the stained glass kind, right? It has an eclectic vibe. And it proclaims Christ in a way that doesn't feel cringy Christian like some Christian bookstore type decor. I was so excited to step into a symbol like this. I know I learned about it when I got a tour in one of those firsts, learning about the church and the space. But I hadn't remembered it fully. In those early days of transitioning into senior pastor at St. Paul's Lenexa, there was so much to learn and to do, and to respond to, and to lead toward, that I needed to give myself, probably now, some grace on remembering it all. Remember to give Pastor Kyle that grace, too. I also know that a lot of pre-COVID memories from those first seven or eight months of my time here are a bit of a blur. But someone walked me through around the church, through the church, and they told me about the cross why it was tilted to the side. The only thing I could remember about what they shared is that it tilts a little to the left. And folks joke that leaning left is fitting for St. Paul's. What I missed about the explanation, I've now found as I have been sorting through things to hand off to Pastor Kyle. The cross leans intentionally. It's not just artsy, it's theological, it's about God. It's ecclesial. It's about the church. It's a sign of our Christian ethic. You see, it's meant to be a reminder that Christ leads us out into the world. Christ leads us out into the world. We cannot follow Jesus and stay put inside these walls. Isn't that what our scripture says today? To live out our faith. Our scripture moves us into a time before Jesus died and rose and ascended. Instead, there is a prediction of these things, a foretelling of what was to come. I included that part in our reading today because my prayer for you, my prayer for you is that you never forget how central the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is to our faith. Truly the good news before us, the roots of the faith we are to live out. And the reason we have before us what comes next in Scripture They're often referred to as the discipleship sayings of Jesus, the next part. Deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me. Save your life by losing it. Gaining profits without gaining life will leave you unfulfilled. Following Jesus isn't a private matter. You have to say it out loud. You have to live it out loud. And the kingdom of God is near. It's so much packed into a handful of verses, but what a gift we have in that invitation into a faithful life. And breaking them down, if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Now, this isn't something unique to Luke's gospel. He borrows this from Mark's gospel, like many things, but he slightly changes what Mark said, Jesus said and instead makes it both daily and continuous. Take up your cross daily. And more than that, it's, it's something closer to, if you want to continue following Jesus, you must deny yourself now and take up the cross every day and keep following me. It's not one day's decision and it's over, but it's a decision to make every single day. When I reflect on my time at St. Paul's, I can't help but feel grateful for the ability to have a a different sort of look 
into your daily lives because so much of our time together was at a distance, fumbling our way through a traumatic global health crisis. We were stuck at home, inviting one another into the Zoom screen view of our daily lives before there was like a blur out screen you could put behind yourself, right? Daily decisions as we decided whether or not we would continue our faith when our normal mechanisms for discipleship through the life of the church were stripped from us. But my goodness, I saw you all step up from home. It's like weird to know when the right time is to celebrate all that happened during that terrible, difficult time. But I hope we can find some strength from our resilience back then, even if it was so difficult. I think back to folks serving as greeters and liturgists online before we set up the capability to stream the words on the screen of our live feed. Thinking about people who came and checked the building every night in COVID and also those who still do. I think back to the awkward Zoom care conversations trying to get to know one another our daily lives were completely exposed. We saw our neighbors more. And for those of you who are parents, you learned that school wasn't coming back and you did the greatest parental pivoting that can ever be imagined. We adapted or postponed our, our grand celebrations, like weddings and anniversary parties and funerals and graduations. But we didn't just stop. We daily had to respond to the life before us and had to choose whether we'd continue to be cautious or continue to be in relationship with one another as a church and also daily thinking about what it meant to survive, right? So much of those years are now a blur, rightfully so, in a lot of ways. It's a good thing that we are not still in that pace or that fear, COVID is still with us, but, but so are our routines now, our new realities. But what I'm so grateful for in that season, too, is how much gratitude we all had for one another's daily living. We asked, are you okay? We checked in on our neighbors. We told each other that our jobs mattered, and what we were doing was so important in those hard times. We trusted most folks were doing the best they can, and that was such a treasure. I think back to this empty room, just a handful of us here making sure worship could happen, and looking at the back camera, just praying, praying desperately that what my life that day could offer could make a difference, trusting that God's people on the other side of the camera were there being disciples in their daily living. We joke that we were all so caught up in our own stuff that we don't realize what everyone was going through during that time. But sometimes I think we were more aware then than we are now. You remember the kindness from early pandemic? The thoughtfulness? The purpose we had? The survival? Do you see it the same way now? you name how hard things are now? Are we still in it together? Regardless, my prayer for us, St. Paul's, is that we notice one another's faithfulness now, too. That we cheer each other on and remind people that what they do matters. We're not meant to just grind away at life. We are meant to give it to God, to be fulfilled. The scripture reminds us that we are, uh, or that reminds us that we lose our life to gain it. I think during my time at St. Paul's, we got to have a really hard lesson in not being in control of our lives, our comfort, our time, our future. And I don't just mean at church, but think about the last four years. You survived something unbelievable. You would have told us it would happen when I got here. None of us would have imagined, you know. And we're all forever changed for it. 
my prayer is that daily, that, that daily you are choosing to follow Jesus out into your daily lives, that continued path. And I pray that you remember that it's not stuff or security or wealth that will define your next season either. It's always going to be the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the unconditional love that molded you, that molded everyone else as beloved children of God. I've made it a regular practice to read our weekly strict scriptures from the indigenous translation of the New Testament. Most often, I think they're better. And that week, this is true. Or this week, that is true. If you want to walk the road with me, Jesus says, each day you must also be ready to give up your own life and carry your own crossbeam with me to the place of ultimate sacrifice. The ones who hold on to their lives will lose them. But the ones who are willing to lay down their lives for me and my message will live. How will it help you? get everything you want, but lose what it means to be who creator made you to be. Is there anything in this world worth trading for that? How will it help you to get everything you want, but lose what it means to be who creator made you to be? St. Paul's, what a gift, what a gift Christ is in our lives. To remind us after we have been through so much that our goal should be living a fulfilled life, not to get everything we want, but to be who God made us to be, to come alive, perhaps. When we look at this cross that moves us out into the world, I hope those colors dance for you. I pray that you see it and you remember to prioritize God's fulfillment in your life, not just your likes and dislikes, not just the comfort zone of the status quo of the open eyes and ears and minds that you have up until today. But fulfillment that comes from believing that death will be defeated. That's what we see when we see the cross, right? That death will be defeated. The death of racism, the death of homophobia and transphobia, the death of inequity for all the reasons we create inequity. Fulfillment that comes when we believe that we are most in line with Christ, when we let our own status fall away, and that actually leads us to being most holy who God wants us to be. St. Paul's, you've been a step for me in that journey. It doesn't make sense to anyone that I am appointed to one of the larger churches in our conference and trailblazing and fast-tracking up the church ladder. Your youngest senior pastor was 29 when I got the call to come here. First female senior pastor, first queer senior pastor, first out queer married pastor in the conference, and to have all those achievements and to still choose to leave. It doesn't make sense to folks. But my prayer is that you know that regardless of the status and career rewards of my time here personally in this appointment, I am grateful that you all have accepted that I have heard today's scripture and responded with a need for a change in my life. How will it help you to get everything you want but lose what it means to be who Creator made you to be. Sometimes making a personal decision to follow Jesus is hard. And there is trust. There is trust for the good news of death and resurrection even in that. But sometimes, and I've seen it so many times in all of you, the daily choice to be faithful, it just shines. It just absolutely shines. So many of you work in helping professions. You are keeping people alive with health care, with harm reduction, with advocacy, direct services, political action and office, so much more. You're in healing professions that might not always be seen as such. You make music. You set up labs. You host Nana camps. 
You are a project manager. You lead your people well. I love watching your lives unfold because they are so revealing what God is doing in and among you, how God is calling you into a life of fulfillment. For some of you, it's been changing careers or holding different boundaries or furthering your education. For some of you, that is retirement. For some of you, parenthood, constantly losing your life to gain the best and hardest things you could ever imagine. For some of you, that's been figuring yourselves out, who you are. My prayer is that on the other side of all the discernment and the trying hard to follow Jesus part, that you will see the intersection of both everything you want and being who creator made you to be. That's the gospel good news. That's the kingdom of God. And when you look at the cross pointing out into the world, I hope you can hold to mind the kinds of examples where those intersections meet. And if you don't already have them, what I've learned these past four years is that all we need to do is look around into the daily living of the people who make up this faith community. You'd see the daily choice of taking up the cross that looks like the Zimmermans in the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, advocating for their neighbors by being good neighbors in the face of injustice. You'd see Scott Groth quit the corporate world and absolutely come alive teaching high school science in KCK. You'd see Pat Cooper being so passionate about our friends at the Dialogue Institute that her life is different because of it. And so are many others. You'd see our youth and their radical inclusion and love for one another through one of the hardest seasons for them, coming back after COVID, losing so much time. You'd see it in The Witness that I heard the other day. I was talking with our bishop, and he said, it seems like I can't go anywhere and not run into someone from your church. That's a good witness out in the world. You'd see the daily choice of taking up the cross and the commitment to be neighbors out there, you know, a little free library we have, a gaga ball pit, green space, even if our neighbors are dear. <laughs> You'd see it at Pride, or when we went down and joined a citywide prayer stretching across troops. You'd see it when we all show up to a wedding. You'd see it when we all show up to a funeral. You'd see the daily choice in the baptisms and in the receiving of communion and the forgiveness we have for one another and the intolerance we have for exclusion. You'd see it when someone picks someone else up for church or when they sign up to be greeters or card writers. You'd see it when someone puts in the work to understand pronouns and gender identity and gender expression. You'd see the daily choice of taking up the cross when people choose to read something that will stretch them out of their comfort zone and toward a world that Christ imagines for us. See it in Serve Week. Seems like every week at St. Paul's could be called Serve Week. But I'm so grateful for a church that was willing to expand our reach greatly in COVID by transforming a beloved day that we had had that became tradition in Servant Sunday and have it reach wider and farther and deeper to serve God by serving others. My prayer for, for all of you in the days and the months and the years to come is that you take this scripture to heart, that you daily make the choice to follow Christ out into the world and to be the person God created you to be. A calling that is not easy, but a calling that one day will be. There are so many people and influencers and authority figures and money makers who will tell you that there are a million other things to measure your life with. My prayer for you is that you hear Jesus 
that your life will never feel fulfilled if you do not be who God created you to be. Fully loved for who you are. God made you you to change the world. When you look up at the cross or you see it on our website or on our social media or a sticker you put on your water bottle or computer, when you see this cross leaning over, know it's not just stylistic. It's not going to fall over. Pointing you to the life you need to be living. My prayer is that you will see it and you'll be grateful for this church for the witnesses all around you, and for the incredible gift it is to take up our cross daily and follow Jesus out into this world. May it be so. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Every week after the sermon, we get a chance to pray and a chance to give back to God what is God's. And so we have an offering plate here in the front and in the back, as well as candles, both in the front and back. You can come and light a candle, and it is a a prayer, a prayer that's on your heart. Uh, I was telling 9 o'clock, when I got to St. Paul's, I did not understand the candle part. It was very confusing to me. I asked a lot of questions. But I think in so many ways, the candles are a reminder of what we go out to when we leave this place and what we bring with us when we come here. And it's a reminder that the light shines in all of that, but that we don't forget it. We don't forget it. Those prayers are alive and they are burning on our hearts and our minds. And so I invite you to come and pray and come and give. Stupid that I'm 
You may be seated. What a joy it is to gather around this table as we uh, went through Serve Week and with uh, our first Sunday food drive uh, today, I've, I've just been thinking about how much important work we do around meals. So many of our Serve Week places were sharing meals together. So many were preparing meals to go uh, throughout our community. And so I'm so grateful that we get this gift of a meal together that Jesus gave us that by grace, maybe all our meals, all our tables might start looking more like this table where all are welcome and there's enough for everyone. So that's our prayer as we come. Uh, I'm excited that uh, kids, we want you to be a part of uh, communion this morning. All are welcome. Will you pray with me? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right, a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the very breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for the day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nation would not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so it is with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus the Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick and fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, God, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death. You made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. And on the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, that meal with his friends, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and shared it with his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body. It's given for you. Do this and remember me. And in the same way, after supper was over, Jesus gave thanks and again, shared it with his friends and said, drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this every time you drink it and remember me. And so God, it is in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And uh, we proclaim together the mystery of faith saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, God, make us one with Christ, one with one another, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together forever at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory belongs to you, Almighty God, now and tomorrow and forever. Amen. And so let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Again, friends, all are welcome. It's my prayer that you come and taste of grace, that Jesus is with you and for you. And then we're, we're filled up and we're fueled for the work that Christ has for us throughout the week.
Let's stand together as you are able and join in singing our closing hymn. As we go from this place, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit go with us now and always, that we might be the light, go in peace and serve the Lord.